Content management systems have two sides, the front end that the world sees and the back end administration side. The back end, often called an admin for short, is where you add content, configure your site, manage users, and do numerous other management tasks. The administrative interface for Drupal 7 got a pretty significant facelift to make it more user friendly. I think the usability team did a great job. In this tutorial, we're going to do a quick review of Drupal's admin. We're going to move pretty quickly and just do an overview. Much of the rest of this course, though, we'll be digging deeper into the admin specifics. So let's start our tour. Here we are on a freshly installed Drupal site. Now, because we've just finished our installation, we're already logged in. And you can tell that because of these toolbars that are up at the top of our page. What I want to do next, though, is I want to log out so that we can see what the login process is like. To log out, I simply click this link here. And of course, we see our toolbars go away. And now I get this login box that's over on the sidebar. Now, the one thing is, though, that this sidebar box is there by default, but it can be removed in different websites. So if you ever come to a website that you want to log into and you don't see this, you can go to another URL with slash user, and now you're going to get into the login page. Although, actually, this login page can be removed also, but most of the time it's there, allowing you to log in. But I'm going to run back to our sidebar block and use it to log in and I just simply put in my username and password and click login. Now that we're logged back in, our administrative bars show up again. This top black one is called the toolbar. It gives us access to all of Drupal's administration pages. This gray one is called the shortcut bar. It's really designed for quick links to commonly used tasks. So let's go ahead and start working through our toolbar starting from the left to the right. This far left button is called the home button and it simply just takes us back to home. It actually does the same thing that clicking on the icon, this title, or this tab does, but realize that all three of these are part of the theme and aren't necessarily going to be there depending on how your site's going to be designed. So we always have this that can take us back home. This next button launches our administrative dashboard. Now the first thing you might notice is that the page pulled up in an overlay on top of our main website. This is new in Drupal 7 and gives us more of a Web 2.0 style workflow. The majority of admin pages will pop up in this overlay. To close the overlay, we simply click on this X and now we're back to our website. But let's go ahead and launch our dashboard again. The dashboard gives you a quick view of important site data. It is effectively your executive site summary. You can even customize the dashboard. You do that by clicking this link. Here you're given access to additional blocks that you can add. So let's say, for example, that you're a community manager and you need to check on all the comments that are coming through. So you might want to drag this recent comments block. Simply click Done, and now it's added. And if there's, this is a new website, so we don't see any comments, but if there were, they would appear here. You can also easily remove things. Let's say, for example, who's new isn't important, so you can just drag that here. Click Done, and now it's gone. Well, there's only a few blocks right now, you actually can add many different ones of these as you start to build your website. Our next toolbar menu is Content. This is where you can go to add and edit the content on your website. The main page provides a list of pages, or what Drupal calls nodes. You'll also notice that you have this sub-tab over here that allows you to switch back and forth between editing a list of nodes, which is under Content, or editing a list of comments. This is the area that knowledge workers tend to spend a lot of their time. Our next item is Structure. This is where we can set where and how content is laid out on our website. We can do things like move blocks around a page, control navigation, and organize data. Site builders spend a lot of their time in this section. Structure does not control the overall visual design of our site, though. This is done underneath Appearance. Drupal controls the look of a website, which includes things like colors, fonts, and graphics by using themes. Appearance is where we can go ahead and install new themes and even go in and do various different configuration settings on themes. People is where we manage users and user permissions. The first tab provides us with a list of users so that we can do administrative tasks such as changing passwords or emails or even banning people from the site. The permissions tab gives us access to Drupal's highly flexible roles-based permission system. We can create new roles and then we can go and define which permissions we want to go along with these roles. Modules are where we can manage the functional add-ons for Drupal. Drupal is a highly flexible system built on the modular concept. From this page, 
We can enable or disable any modules we've installed in our system. We can even go and download new modules, selecting from any of the thousands that are available on Drupal.org. The Configuration section is where you go to input settings for various functional components of Drupal. It's sort of a catch-all for all configuration settings that don't fit into the other menu options. As you add modules to Drupal, many of them will add configuration pages to this section. This next button provides access to various different reports that Drupal produces. The one that's most commonly used is the recent log messages, which shows a listing of important events that happen on our website. The last button is Help. This is pretty self-explanatory. It just provides help for Drupal's various functions. Now that we've covered the items on the toolbar, let's go ahead and take a look at the shortcut bar. The shortcut bar does not give us any new administrative pages. It just provides us with an easy way to link to already existing functionality. So for example, the Find Content link is the same link under the toolbar of just Content. Add Content is the same as going to Content on the toolbar and then clicking this link. The great thing about the shortcut bar is we can customize it. We can even create multiple link groups and assign them to different people with various different roles. For example, copywriters could have one set of shortcuts, and site admins could have a different set. Let's take a look at how we can edit our shortcuts. For example, let's say you're a community manager, and you need to regularly view user comments. We simply want to navigate to the page that we want to add our shortcut. So we go to Content, Comments, and then we roll over the title here, and we click on this plus sign. And there, it's added our comment to our shortcut. So now we can access all three shortcuts easily. If we want to remove one, we simply click the minus, we confirm that we want to delete it, and now it's gone. So let's take a look at another very useful admin interface element called contextual menus. As you navigate around your Drupal site, there are various different blocks and menus and pieces of content. Many of them, when you roll over, you're going to get this gear icon that lets you know that there's actually some extra tools that you can use underneath it. So for example, if I go down to this navigation menu, I can click here and go to list links and now I can edit the links in my navigation menu. So this is just another way of accessing our administrative pages but it puts it in context wherever you find things on the website. Now we've reviewed the major components of the admin interface but what can we actually do with it? Let's take an example and look at a simple admin task, changing the name of our website. To do that we'd go to configuration and underneath here we go to site information. And we get a box on this page that allows us to type in our new title. So just put in Acme Widgets. And then we scroll down and click Save. I exit out. And now we see the title of our website has changed. And this is just a simple example of different types of things that you do through the admin. The Drupal 7 admin interface is a significant improvement from previous versions. It does a remarkable job of appearing simple, yet still providing access to Drupal's unparalleled flexibility. Not an easy task. One word of caution I should give, though, is that we reviewed the admin with just Drupal Core installed. As we add modules to our site, the admin options will grow, although the interface will generally still work the same. I hope this has been an enlightening look at Drupal's back end, and I invite you to watch the rest of the Getting Started with Drupal course as we dig deeper to see what Drupal can do.